Thank you to the Society of Pediatric Psychology for having me here today. I want to thank all of the pediatric psychologists, your staff, your trainees, and by extension your families for the very difficult work you've been doing for the past two years supporting the American people through the pandemic. You have my personal gratitude and that of the entire United States Department of Health and Human Services. COVID-19 has been the biggest public health challenge our nation and the world has seen in more than 100 years. It has impacted our health, our families, our schools, our businesses, our health care system, and local, state, and federal governments. Some of the most severe impacts have fallen on our youth, both directly and indirectly. Children and adolescents appeared at the beginning of 2020 to be somewhat less likely to be infected or to have severe disease from COVID-19. But as the pandemic progressed and the more contagious Delta and Omicron variants surged nationwide, larger numbers of children and adolescents became infected and many required treatment. Some of these children required treatment in the intensive care units at children's hospitals due to COVID-19 infections or others due to, due to the condition MISC. Many youth are experiencing the indirect effects of caregiver stress, which we know can be substantial. Children are also dealing with the cumulative social effects of disrupted schooling and the need for physical distancing, which may have left some feeling less connected with their peers and teachers. Children's mental health during public health emergencies can have both short and long-term consequences for their well-being. Studies suggest that our youth continue to experience emotional trauma and they need our help. Our country faces an unprecedented mental health crisis among people of all ages. Communities of color are disproportionately undertreated, even as their burden of mental illness has continued to rise. Even before the pandemic, rates of depression and anxiety were inching higher. The grief, trauma, and physical isolation of the last two years have driven Americans to the breaking point. Losses from COVID and disruptions to routines and relationships have led to increased social isolation, anxiety, and even learning loss for our youth. More than half of parents express concern over their children's mental well-being. An early study found that students are about five months behind in math and four months behind in reading compared to students prior to the pandemic. Now in 2019, before the pandemic, one in three high school students and half of female students reported persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness. Now that's an overall increase of 40% from 2009. Emergency department visits for attempted suicide have risen 51% among adolescent girls. In his first State of the Union address, President Biden announced a strategy to address our national mental health crisis. He laid out a vision to transform how mental health is understood, perceived, accessed, treated, and integrated in and out of healthcare settings. The American Rescue Plan laid the groundwork, providing critical investments to expand access to mental health services. Now, far more is needed to ensure that everyone who needs help can access care when and where they seek it. It is imperative that we promote better pathways to care and make it as easy as possible for all Americans with behavioral health needs, including common and pervasive conditions such as anxiety and depression, to access the resources that will improve their well-being. We must fight to ensure that every American can access mental health and substance use disorder care through their insurance coverage, while integrating mental health services and supports into a variety of other settings online and in the community. This is a critical issue that we must and will address. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra has kicked off the national tour to strengthen mental health in an effort to hear directly from Americans across the country about the behavioral health challenges that they're facing and engage with local elected officials and leaders to strengthen the mental health and crisis care system in our communities. 
The national tour to strengthen mental health is a department-wide effort to address the challenges that have been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, including substance use, youth mental health, and suicide. As we address our nation's behavioral health needs, we must give particular consideration to those who have been denied opportunities and are disproportionately impacted by poor access to quality health care and roadblocks to their well-being. That means being particularly mindful of how to advance equity for minorities, for people in impoverished and rural communities, for LGBTQI plus community members, and other underserved populations. HHS is committed to an evidence-based approach to understanding barriers in advancing opportunity and equity. We have recommitted to using every tool in our toolbox to expand the data that we have on race, ethnicity, and primary language, sexual orientation and gender identity, geography, disability, and the social determinants of health. The mission of the United States Department of Health and Human Services is to enhance the health and well-being of all Americans, no matter their sexual orientation or gender identity. All people need access to health care services, whether it's to fix a broken bone, protect their heart health, or screen for cancer risk. No one should be discriminated against when seeking medical services or behavioral health services because of who they are or who they love. Discrimination in health care impacts health outcomes. Research shows that one quarter of LGBTQI plus people who faced discrimination actually postponed or avoided receiving needed medical care for fear of further discrimination. We are working to address this. We have not made progress unless we have made progress for all. We need to continue to strongly advocate for the most vulnerable in our community. Transgender persons suffer significant health disparities and often need medical intervention as part of their care. One of the biggest barriers the trans community faces is a shortage of sufficiently knowledgeable care providers. Other barriers include cost, discrimination, lack of cultural competence by providers, health system barriers, and socioeconomic barriers. There have been attempts in Texas and other states to actually limit access for transgender and gender diverse youth to evidence-based standards of care. These are dangerous to people's health. They are politically motivated and they are egregious. Transgender and gender diverse youth and their families have the right to access medically necessary treatment. This care is often provided in our nation's children's hospitals in other locations with frequently with pediatricians and pediatric psychologists. President Biden supports equality and will work to ensure that everyone is represented. That gives people a voice, a chance to affect change, to help people understand the diverse needs of our nation. At HHS, Secretary Becerra and I are committed to doing everything that we can to support these vulnerable patients and their families. The dedication of our behavioral health workers has shown through during this pandemic. My message today is that it is important, of course, to also remember your own physical and mental health. Realize when you might need a break and when you're giving too much of yourself. You know that you can only help others if you are healthy too. This is especially important to remember for those of you who have been on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19. Please remember to take care of yourselves. Stay connected, stay informed, and stay safe.